G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so there's been a lot of stories about uh, Chainlink, you know, there was a lot of fart a while ago that, you know, the owners were going to dump on it and all the rest of it. And this story, well, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. This is the concerning part about Link. And I'm not trying to hate on Link, you know, a lot of projects are somewhat similar to this, but it is still very centralised. So more than 80% of all Chainlink is controlled by 125 wallets. So there's 125, you know, individuals or groups or whatever it may be that own 80% of all the link. At some price, they're going to sell some and they probably already have been, but it'd be concerning if it got to a certain price and then all of a sudden they, you know, kind of just dumped everything on the market. It would absolutely tank the price. So, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I consider myself one of the link marines. I really like what Chainlink's doing and what they're all about. But they're not really decentralized, are they? If 80% of all the tokens are controlled by 125 wallets. So I'm not trying to spread FUD or anything like that, but it is something that we need to keep in mind. That, you know, if you are in profit uh, for Chainlink and, you know, considerably in profit, consider taking some profit, you know, to take some of that money. Say you're 5x up, well, you know, and maybe even more, who knows? If you're 5x up, Maybe just get your money back. So at least then the rest is just a moon bag. Now again, nothing I say is financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not a certified financial investor in any way, shape or form. It's just a consideration. That way if, you know, again, what say, you know, they're just waiting for Link to get to $40 and then they're all going to, you know, dump it. And again, I'm not saying they are. Then all of a sudden, you know, whatever you had is worth a whole lot less. So consideration only, if you're really in profit in Chainlink, considering getting at least your initial money back. That way, if it you know really does tank, you don't lose it all. Because 80% being controlled by only 125 wallets, that is uh, somewhat concerning. I mean, you know, 115 of them could be long-term hodlers for all we know. But, you know, everyone generally has their sell price. So something we need to watch out for. All right, Ethereum, as we know, it's, uh, you know, everyone's talking about it at the moment. It's getting oh so close to its old all-time highs and it has surged 50% against Bitcoin in two weeks. But in all fairness, Bitcoin's sort of been ranging for a while and all the alts are generally doing pretty well. So while Ethereum may uh, have gained 50% against Bitcoin in the last two weeks, other alts have had, you know, have done a lot better. And same thing, I'm not fighting on Ethereum. I'm a massive Ethereum fan and, and I have uh, I'm a, you know, a significant amount of my portfolio in Ethereum. My alts are well out doing uh, Ethereum at the moment. And it's because Ethereum is sort of ranging as well. It has slowly crept up, but Bitcoin and Ethereum are kind of ranging and that's why the alts are doing so well. How long that's going to last? Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But it is good that Ethereum has been doing so well. And I am really waiting for it to crack that kind of, you know, 1,450-ish dollar mark. You know, and, you know, also looking for, is it a fake out where it just goes above it? And then again, we have a significant pullback to, you know, maybe 1,200, 1,100 or 1,000, whatever it may be, before we really start to make a move. And, you know, we consolidate over that 1,450 uh, mark. We'll have to wait and see, but I am, you know, like most people, pretty happy with how my Ethereum has been doing. But in general, I'm pretty happy with how all my crypto has been doing. I don't think have I don't have any cryptos that are in the red anymore, which is always good. Whereas before, some of them were 40, 50 percent down. Uh, you know, persistence has paid off, uh, but you know, I possibly could have, you know, done better things with them than waiting all this time for them to finally be up, you know, 50% where things like Ethereum and Bitcoin are up, you know, 300% since then. So that is the thing with uh, altcoins. Yeah, you can buy them, you know, you can buy them real cheap, but that's why you wouldn't want to put too much into them because it might take you a really long time to, you know, make some significant gains. Whereas if you were in the better performers and the bigger ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you probably would have made those type of gains and some uh, during that period. So just something to consider. Now, an interesting article I found here. So uh, after 750 million uh, big dollar Bitcoin allocation, Ruffer Investments says BTC is early in its safe haven cycle. Uh, and look, I would have to agree. 
but the, you know the volatility is an issue but it's how we make the massive gains but eventually that will start to subside but what I found more interesting about this is that they had allocated 2.5% of its portfolio into Bitcoin. While the initial reports claim that this percentage represents about 15 million, Ruffer later revealed that the actual amount is considerably higher, about 750 million. So originally people were saying if you allocate maybe 1% to 2% of your you know, total portfolio to Bitcoin, now it's 2.5% that people are talking about and they're going. And look, this is going to continue to get higher. Uh, and you know, over the long term, I think a lot more will be put into Bitcoin. But again, the volatility is, uh, is an issue. Now I do have an article over here. So Steve, Steve Forbes says Bitcoin's fixed supply limits its ability to meet the needs of a, uh, of a growing economy. Negative. Wrong, Mr. Forbes. You're completely wrong. That is what makes it so good. It's because there is only a certain amount. It can't just be continually inflated into, you know, oblivion. I, I, I think he's completely wrong about that. But very smart guy. I'm not trying to throw complete shot at shade on him, but he is wrong about that. That is what makes Bitcoin so good. The fact that it is finite. There's 21 million, a couple of million have been lost. That is all there is. That is why its value will continue to go up because it is, yeah, a fixed supply. Now, what he does uh, have right here, though, is he says, uh, he also argues that Bitcoin cannot replace the dollar because it, pre it is pre present presently too volatile to function as money. Forbes insists that a money only works best if it has a stable value. That he's completely right on. It is going to take some time for Bitcoin to, you know, sort of, again, it will never be that kind of stable that we're think thinking of, of, you know, it's just worth a dollar and it's always going to be worth a dollar. Its value will definitely start to level out as in the volatility wise, but in theory, it should always go up. Other than, you know, there's going to be some price swings at times, but over time it should just continue to go up because it's not being printed into, uh, you know, infinity and oblivion. So I think the part about it needs to be stable to be a kind of reserve world currency, completely agree. That will happen over time. But the fact that it's uh, a fixed supply uh, and that's one of its downfalls, he has that completely wrong, completely utterly wrong. It is divisible and it can continue to be devised, you know, divisible. Uh, and eventually some stage in the future, I'm sure they'll make it even more divisible if they need to. But the fact that it is capped at 21 million is what makes it so good. That is why Bitcoin is a great store of value. The volatility at the moment, because it's new and kind of wild, uh, is an issue. But over the long term, that will start to uh, peter out. And then it just should be, again, there'll always be ebbs and flows of up and down. Is it popular? You know, what it's looking like on the chart, that will always play a part. But in theory, if Bitcoin plays out as it, you know, we're all hoping it does, it should just continue to increase in value over the long term. Short term, absolutely, there'll be fluctuations. But I think, again, those fluctuations will start to minimise and you won't have to worry. It will have that store of value. Now, the EU over here. So the European Union is reportedly planning to reduce its reliance on the US dollar-based financial system after American sanctions on Iran exposed the vulnerabilities of the bloc's financial infrastructure, according to officials who are now determined to challenge the dollar's supremacy. Uh, I don't think the US dollar is going to be, uh, you know, the, the world... Uh, sort of currency in the not too distant future. They've got so many problems, you know, with the pandemic and that, and they've had to print so much money. And because it's, again, it's the entire world that they're kind of printing money for at times, uh, it is an issue. What the next global sort of currency will be, who knows? You know, they talk about, you know, obviously they think uh, the the European uh, pound, you know, or whatever is going to be the next currency. It will suffer the same fate, though. It is a fiat-based currency. They all go to zero. So while we can change from the US dollar uh, to the euro, uh, that won't last. That'll have, you know, 100 years in it. Um, I don't have the answer, and I don't know exactly what uh, the plan is, uh, I'm not sure Bitcoin can be the, you know, the global currency. It can be a reserve, 
but I agree. I don't think it can be a global currency at the moment. It doesn't have the infrastructure. It'd collapse. Again, you know, millions have been lost. So there's, you know, a number of issues that have to work through. But, you know, the euro dollar or the euro pound or whatever you want to call it, that is going to fail just like the American dollar will. They are all based on the exact same fundamental uh, problems is that they can just be printed to infinity uh, and something else can come up and then the euro would just have to print themselves into oblivion uh, to sustain. So, you know, exactly what the answer is, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not smart enough to have that. But I definitely think uh, anything that, you know, can just be randomly printed uh, is not going to be the the answer long term uh, you know maybe a basket of currencies so we're you know jumping between different ones when they're doing better and others aren't doing so well uh, and again you know with bitcoin thrown in there as part of that reserve currency uh, you know that would be my sort of idea but look you know i'm not uh a financial whiz by any uh, sort of stretch of the imagination. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I know simply replacing the US dollar with something else that's basically the same, just a different name change, uh, is not going to be the answer. Some really smart minds are going to have to get together and figure out, you know, how we move forward with something that will last more than, you know, m maybe, you know, our children's lifetime, uh, because that's what all fiats have done. They generally just don't last. They they die and go to zero in the end. Not that the you know the American dollar will literally go to zero, but it it can't be the world uh, reserve currency anymore. And you know, neither can the European uh, pound or the European dollar or any other fiat based system. They just won't last. Again, a group of them are mixed in there, so they can juggle in and out of the two you know, or you know the three, four, five, whatever it may be. That might be the way it has to be done. And again, also, you know, the world reserve currency probably needs to be based on some other things other than, you know, at the moment we have that kind of petrodollar. So what the new world reserve system uh, will be uh, is very interesting. And I look forward to seeing uh, if they can actually come up with something better than simply going, all right, well, the US dollars had too much printed. So let's go over to the European dollar because they haven't printed as many. Uh, that's bound to fail. <laughs> It'll just take another 9,500 years or whatever it is before that does exactly the same as the dollar. And hopefully people will uh, clue on to the fact that, you know, that is just the same cycle over again. The super rich getting rich all the time, the poor staying poor, uh, and them just simply circulating uh, between the next uh, global currency. That system doesn't work. All right, now, so an Australian business owner, he is actually suing two of uh, the big banks in Australia because uh, they made it so that he, he runs a legitimate exchange, uh, but he needs a bank account, a business bank account to do that. And ANZ and Westpac, uh, which are both two very big banks in Australia, uh, have you know cut him out and said, no, nope, uh, we're not going to allow you to bank with us. So he is suing them. And it says down here, this is some of the... Uh, the hurdles that we're going to face with crypto becoming mainstream. The banks will do everything they can to, you know, slow it down. They, they can't stop it. It's too late for that. But, you know, a guy, how he's, and exactly like he says here, how am I supposed to run a lawful business if I can't get a bank account? And, and you know, they've, they've done that. A number of banks uh, were making it nearly impossible for people to buy crypto and things like that. Now, the Australian uh, government has some fairly, you know, yeah, somewhat friendly crypto regulations. So the banks have had to ease off on that. Uh, and again, I'm guessing he's found a bank that he can actually use. Uh, and, you know, he's suing them for something crazy. What is 300 and something, uh, $329,000 or something he's suing these banks uh, because they wouldn't allow him to have a business account. He, he couldn't, you know, put the money that he was making in there to pay his taxes and things like that. So uh, very interesting and disappointing that ANZ and Westpac are pulling, you know, shady stuff like this. It, it, there are legit crypto exchanges in Australia. He's obviously running one of them. Uh, whether you agree or disagree with, you know, cryptocurrencies and their future, shouldn't mean you should be able to cut him out from being able to, you know, again, pay his taxes and all the rest of it by having a legit bank account. That is extremely disappointing. And, you know, hopefully that is something that uh, doesn't continue. That would be the best way to put it. All right, let's go over here. So we need to refresh this. So we're over the trillion dollar mark. 
Uh, Bitcoin's been ranging, so altcoins are you know, completely going off their head. And again, this BTC dominance continues to drop. As long as it continues to drop, uh, altcoins are going to continue to go crazy. But you need to remember they ebb and flow. Today, you know, you're up 20%. Tomorrow, you're down by 6, 7, 10%. It's not just they keep going up uh, and there's no sort of corrections. And we'll have a look at that shortly. All right, so let's refresh and see where we're at though. So 64.6% and uh, 1 trillion and 46 billion dollars. What's changed in the time since uh, we've been running this video? All right, so it's got gone up. There you go. So there's four billion dollars uh, that has been added to the market cap, uh, and this has actually gone down again some. So that was I think 64.6. So it's now 64.4. So I think it's safe to say that this is now altcoin season. Look, this can go much lower. Don't get me wrong. And you know, the uh, the altcoins can really do some crazy stuff. But just because Bitcoin dominance is dropping doesn't mean Bitcoin uh, has to comp uh, stay stable and can't go up. In the latter part of 2017, Bitcoin was still going up in price. It was surging, but so were altcoins. They were kind of doing it almost in unison. In the late part of 2017, you would see Bitcoin run for a couple of days. Uh, and then it would drop off for, you know, again, 24 hours, 48 hours. And the money was just constantly like changing from, you know, Bitcoin for a couple of days, then into the altcoins for a, a day or two, then back into Bitcoin for a couple of days and then back into the altcoins for a day or two. And it was it was actually quite easy. You could just follow the pattern. All right, I've got my money in Bitcoin. All right, it slowed down. Sweet. Go find some alts. Those alts would pump for like, you know, 24, 48 hours. Take the profits from them. So if you're up 20%, take 20% of that, put it back into Bitcoin, wait for Bitcoin to pump, you know, Again, maybe it went up by 20% and go find the altcoins that you liked, which had probably dropped by 30, 40% and just keep going back between the two. Now, I don't recommend doing that. Uh, you get chewed, chewed up with fees if you're doing it with small amounts, but if you're doing it with larger amounts, it was kind of pretty much that easy. But that's in the full mania uh, euphoric stage. For me, um, you know, I'm just looking for good ones to get into. Uh, and if I see one has dropped by, you know, 20, 30 percent, I'm probably going to take some profits out of Bitcoin, put it back into there. Uh, and then I'll wait uh, to see uh, it go up. Uh, and again, if it then, you know, doubles or triples uh, in the next three or four weeks, I'll take those profits uh, and put them back uh, into Bitcoin, at least some of them, not all of them. And that way I'm increasing uh, my exposure to my altcoins. And I just use Cardano as an example. And I'm also increasing my Bitcoin at the same time. But again, if you're doing that with really small amounts, like, you know, five, ten, twelve dollars here and there, it, it the the fees will generally kind of uh, chew a substantial amount of that up. So really, you're probably better to just kind of buy what you like and just simply hold until you think we're at the peak of the cycle and not the exact top. You won't be able to pick it. Start to sell off, you know, have your targets. What price do I want Polkadot to get it into? So you say, all right, I'm buying at $16. You know, I've put $100 in. I want uh, for Polkadot to at least double or triple now there's no guarantees at will but let's say you go for double all right I need uh, polka dot to be at at least thirty three dollars thereabouts and then I'm going to start to take profits from there every time it rises I take 10 percent or 20 percent or again I just completely get the money I invested back and I and I let the rest of that polka dot ride uh, and that's your moon bag you know you've got to have your plan and work out how you're going to do it all right, let's have a look though. What are the big movers at the moment? What's really moved? Because a lot of things are moving. So there we can see, all right, a number of altcoins. And again, in seven days, you know, they're up 50%, 70%. Uh, so doing quite well. But what we need to remember is it's not they just continue to go up. They are going to cycle up. Then they're going to retrace. People take out those profits. And again, maybe they put them back into Bitcoin, uh, into another altcoin, whatever it is that they do, and they will fluctuate because we can go over here and we can see there's been some losses as well. So Kasama, as we can see, it was up 66%. It's retraced 10%. 
Uh, curve token up 135 percent in seven days it's retraced uh, that much and it may continue to go down it may take a few days before it starts to make its way back up again so there definitely are losers and again ren and things like that but generally things are kind of on the up and up so you know if you want to trade and you know jump in and out of tokens uh, by all means you can do that I don't recommend it I don't you know do it like on a daily basis I will do it you know based on you know again if I see something go up by 20 30 percent you know in a day or two I might I might take 20 30 percent of my holdings and put them back into Bitcoin but again I still have to look at the charts and do I think it's uh, got more to go and things like that and again I, I'm, I don't want to be doing that on a daily basis I'll get chewed up in fees and then there's taxes that you have to pay at the end of the year uh, and again if it's just very small amounts it's just not worth it you better to you know, do your research, find the projects that you believe in, uh, simply buy and hold. Investing is the much better and easier uh, strategy. Uh, the trading and stuff uh, can be quite difficult. Uh, and again, I, it's not that I don't do any, I do. Like I said, if I've had a 20, 30% gain, I might take 20, 30% of my entire uh, holdings of whatever that coin. So let's say IST, IOS, no, let's go to the winners. All right, so let's say I'm in Ample Fourth. Uh, and I've got $100 worth initially, I've got $100 worth of Ampleforth, and in 24 hours it goes up 25.2%. I might take 25.2% of all my ample worth, ample fourth, sorry, turn it into Bitcoin and put it into Bitcoin. And then again, if it continues to go up, you know, and it goes up another 25.2%, uh, the next day I might take another 25.2% and put it into Bitcoin. Because I know at some stage it's going to retrace. Now, it doesn't mean it could do it anytime soon. This could just be the start of some massive parabolic move. But let's say it doesn't do that. And then all of a sudden it retraces uh, 35 to 40% a few days later. Then I take that uh, Bitcoin that I put in that's either stayed stable or maybe even gone up a little bit, come back and buy into uh, Ample Forth. Now again, that, that is kind of trading. I'm not doing that on a daily sort of basis. I don't want to be continually jumping in and out. But that might be a way to increase the amount of both Bitcoin that you have uh, and increase the amount of uh, altcoins that you have. But again, you need to be very careful. For me, uh, if I was early and didn't understand it, uh, I would simply buy and just hold and then again go back understand charts you know know when you think uh, the top is sort of coming or have your price targets again I've got ample fourth at a dollar sixteen if it gets to two dollars and I think this is uh, you know meant to be sort of stable around a dollar I could be wrong um, then again yeah have your price targets have your plan those who plan to f those who fail to plan plan to fail if you don't have something, uh, you know, a plan, you're probably just going to end up getting scorched and, uh, yeah, end up with not much at the end of it. But uh, let's move on. I've spoken that about that a number of times. All right, here is Bitcoin. So this is the daily chart. So again, it's just ranging. And we've been sort of uh, ranging for quite some time, really. <sighs> What's that? The 5th of January. So, you know, nearly two weeks. We've kind of been just ranging. Uh, and so you can see it goes up and it comes down and it goes up and it comes down and now we're getting some really indecisive candles at the moment so I call these spinning tops so that means uh, an indecisive market that's a spinning top there that's not too far off uh, and this is a spinning top at the moment uh, but again it's early in the day so we're waiting to see is Bitcoin gonna break out and you know push to its next uh, all-time high and again, once Bitcoin starts to break out uh, and it's like a confirmed breakout, I think you're going to see a lot of the profits that have been taken from the altcoins all of a sudden push back into Bitcoin and the alts will sort of bleed. And then, you know, Bitcoin makes its next move, whether that's up to 50,000 or, you know, 60,000 or, you know, just 45,000, whatever it may be. That's what we need to keep an eye out for. And likewise, if Bitcoin starts to drop down, and at the moment, really, if it goes below $33,000, uh, we're probably all going to, uh, you know, suffer some losses there. And then we'll have to find where Bitcoin will find its bottom. Is it kind of down here around, you know, this $30,000 mark? Or do we have to come all the way down here to around about the $24,000 mark? And again, 
you know, the moving averages, the 50 day, 100 and all the rest of it. I think the 200 day moving average currently sits at around about uh, 16, $18,000. The 100 day moving average, I think is down around about here. And I think the 50 day moving average is somewhere down around about sort of 29, uh, 28,000. Uh, but again, I, I haven't actually checked on those today. That was the other day. All right, I'd uh, love to know your thoughts down below. Uh, in regards to this story, do you think that uh, European dollar or pound, whichever one, well, it's not the pound, that is the British pound, do you think the European dollar is going to become the next, uh, you know, world currency? And do you think it will do any better than the, what the uh, US dollar has done? Or do you think it will suffer the same fate just in 95, you know, to 100 years from now? Love to know your thoughts down below. Uh, and, you know, also, how do you think we should go about having a new, you know, reserve world currency? Can Bitcoin play a part in that? Uh, should we have a mix of a number of dollars, you know, the, the bigger ones around the world? You know, can we put oil in there and gold in there? Uh, you know, again, I don't have the answers. I've got no idea uh, exactly how they should do that. If I was that smart, uh I'd probably be a lot more successful <laughs> than what I am now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not unsuccessful, but yeah, I don't think I have the intellect to come up with the exact uh, way to fix that problem. Uh, but maybe you do, and I'd love to know your thoughts. So please let me know down below. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you're in altcoins at the moment, you should be doing extremely well, and it could be about to get way more crazier. And I'll see you next time.